For countless years, humans have used the sky and the stars to predict future events and calculate the personality traits of others. The study of celestial bodies has expanded over time to become one of the most direct ways to estimate someone's character and behavior. This is astrology. So how did astrology become a belief? What scientific aspects make astrology true or false? And how has astrology been used over the years and today? The origins of astrology can be traced back to as early as the second millennium BCE, with ancient pieces of art showcasing recordings of the moon. The specific astrology practice of today is known to have started roughly 400,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, now modern-day Iraq. The first ancient cities in the area, specifically the Babylonian population, made the almost unchanged system of astrology, using tablets to track phases of the moon and the seasons. Lots, and I mean lots, of tablets can be found with dates instructing when and how to harvest, hunt, manage water reserves, and sow crops. This was a way of time management for the Babylonians, which helped track seasons and weather conditions. Other astronomical artifacts outside of Babylon included constellation charts made by stargazers for Chinese emperors and the Mayan calendar. The Mayan populations of Mexico and Guatemala developed what we know as the most advanced and accurate astronomical system, including the Mayan system of prophecy that could predict future events using the moon and stars, which later came true. By the 4th century, calculations had progressed to the mathematical ability of predicting future planetary positions, which then birthed celestial navigation. The zodiac signs were recorded by the Babylonians, who noticed 12 new moons over the course of a year, which correlated with specific patterns of stars, or constellations. Your sun sign, the most commonly known sign, indicated which constellation the sun was in at the time of your birth. Your sun sign is just one of many signs designated to you. You also have signs for each planet, but we'll get more in depth later. Much like the 12 zodiac signs of the Babylonians, the Chinese zodiac incorporated 12 animals. However, each animal represented a different personality based on a cycle of 12 years. In Taiwan, the Chinese zodiac is used by women to plan births. For example, the year of 2010 was the year of the tiger, known not to be considered a lucky year. However, 2012 was the year of the dragon, studied as a very, very lucky year, in which birth rates increased significantly. Astrology could have never been known today if it wasn't for Alexander the Great, who took the studies to Greece after his conquest within Mesopotamia. Alexander the Great is responsible both for introducing the Babylonian astrology to the Greeks and introducing astronomy and Greek mathematics to the Babylonians. A prominent figure in the study of astrology is Claudius Ptolemy, who lived in Alexandria. Ptolemy is not only known for being the father of modern geography, creating some of the world's earliest maps, but also his findings regarding astronomy. Ptolemy, in 2nd century Egypt, wrote the first book to accurately map the speeds and rotations of all of the planets, the sun, and the earth, later proved to be immaculately accurate. He also wrote arguably one of the most important books regarding astrology in history, the Tetra Biblos. The Tetra Biblos is responsible for the early explanations of how the planets rotate and the belief of that having significant effects on humankind. Because of this book, studies expanded to Egypt where Babylonian practice was mixed with traditional Egyptian decanic astrology and created the horoscopic astrology we have found most popular ever since. Astrology came to be the study of the positions and movements of celestial bodies and their specific roles in influencing human types and behavior. One example of how astrology came to be integrated into the belief system is within Christianity. In the early 17th century, astronomer Johannes Kepler was determined to explain what the phenomena of the Star of Bethlehem was. He observed a rare juxtaposition of Jupiter and Saturn, which appeared to be one single star. He calculated when the last instance of this was, concluding it would have occurred on August 22nd within the year 7 BC. He later argued that this could have been the real birthday of Jesus Christ. 
Evidence of this has since been found, assuring not only that Jupiter and Saturn in Pisces was the illusion that created the star of Bethlehem, but it was observed that someone born on the 22nd of August, 7 BC, would have been born when every single planet and the sun was in its own sign, meaning the planets were perfectly aligned with the sign that it naturally rules. A pretty great birthday to have. During the Renaissance, mathematician Dr. John Dee studied the optics that created the beginning plans for Galileo's first telescope. For hundreds of years, humans believed that we were at the center of the solar system. It wasn't until Galileo that we found we actually orbit the sun. Galileo was later known to give readings based on newly found science of astrology using the scientific method. This method of determining what was true was also used to design telescopes, and helped conclude discoveries such as gravity and new moons. The science behind astrology has become more in-depth due to the growth of studies, with even recent studies showing clear scientific evidence of when and where you were born affecting your personality and behavior as a person. An example includes the recent study conducted in 2014 in Budapest that concluded after analyzation of over 400 people that the season you were born in is directly linked to personality due to environmental influences happening on Earth. For example, people born in summer are more optimistic and prone to mood swings, whereas people born in winter are less angry than others. Those born in the month of August are scientifically the least depressed of the population. This direct link between seasons and behavioral traits can also regard the planets, with various aspects of your personality being affected by the position of the planets and the sun at the date and time of your birth. The very first scientist to exemplify scientific research in astrology was Carl Gustav Jung. Jung was one of the first founders of psychology and founded analytical psychology, popularizing psychoanalysis. Just over 100 years ago, he studied astrology readings and natal charts of 483 couples within four different countries, meaning 966 individual natal charts. In his statistical analysis, 936 out of 966 charts had a large proportion of the same association of the positions of the Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars, the four celestial bodies argued by astrologers to indicate relationships and marriage. Jung contacted quantum physics engineer Marcus Fires, who calculated the odds of Jung's discovery happening by chance were around 10 million to 1, a 96.8 correlation to what astrologers said about marriage as well as the natal charts of the couples analyzed. Jung then conducted this same type of experiment three more times, concluding various correlations, convincing him that celestial bodies were very possibly responsible for many factors of the human subconscious mind. Throughout the following centuries leading to today, astrology became more and more integrated within society as a study people participated in in order to better understand themselves and others based on the sky. Each individual planet and its behavioral ruling had been indicated, thus creating more meaning of the zodiac. Societies all over the world became fascinated with the mysticism of horoscopic astrology, the Daily Horoscope became a regular column in newspapers, and in India, astrologers have a major segment on news networks. In 1930, a London newspaper published an article by astrologer R. H. Naylor to mark the birth of Princess Margaret. In his column, Naylor explained that the princess would grow to have a scorn of restraint, which was reportedly true concerning her later legal separation. He then predicted that when the princess was seven years old, a defining moment would take place regarding the royal family. Amazingly enough, just before Margaret's seventh birthday, her uncle coronated her father, making her older sister next in line for the throne. This was Queen Elizabeth. Horoscopes are more focused on the zodiac itself versus astrology as a whole, and the zodiac signs became increasingly popular during these times. The newspaper let Naylor continue writing his predictions in a regular column, but he started focusing on horoscopes for daily readers, based on just their sun sign. The zodiac consists of 12 signs, Aquarius, the water bearer, Pisces, the fish, Aries, the ram, Taurus, the bull, Gemini, the twins, Leo, the lion, Cancer, the crab, Virgo, the virgin, Libra, the the Scales, Scorpio, the Scorpion, Sagittarius, the Archer, and Capricorn, 
the goat. Each sign is represented by a constellation that holds 30 degrees of celestial latitude over the course of a 30-day period, which we know as months in a year. Your birth chart consists of all of your signs and showcases the ecliptic plane or the movement of the sun and stars at different times of the year, but focuses on the location and time of your birth. Your star sign is the most common sign, which represents what constellation the sun was in when you were born. The sun sign can also be defined as your rising sign, which incorporates whether the sun was rising or setting when you were born. This represents your personality and character, and is the most defining sign of all. Your moon sign represents your emotions, moods, and feelings. Your sign for Mercury rules your wisdom, communication, and thinking processes. Venus is the planet of pleasure, representing what and how you love. Your Mars sign indicates the driving forces behind your desires and your aggression. Jupiter and Saturn are the two social planets. Jupiter can be seen as the planet of ethical guidance and rules idealism, optimism, and expansion, while Saturn rules responsibility, restrictions, boundaries, and self-discipline. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are the planets that define generations rather than individuals due to elongated celestial latitude in each sign. Uranus stays in each sign for seven years and rules innovation, rebellion, and progress. Neptune stays in each sign for 14 years, defining dreams, imagination, and the unconscious mindset. Pluto can stay in each sign for up to 30 years and rules power, obsession, and control. Using a full natal chart of your birth, one is able to see each position of the planets giving a full rundown of who an individual is. Astrologer Linda Goodman popularized the idea of zodiac signs in her book Sun Signs, written in 1968. This book was not only the first astrology book to make the New York Times bestseller list, but also sold over 13 million copies and was translated into 15 languages. She argued that with the understanding of at least the sun signs, one's life can be changed. The book indicated that each zodiac sign has a distinct personality, something still being expanded and explained today. Knowing the traits of each zodiac sign helps humans understand others around them and have been aiding decisions for individuals who've used it. In the late 1980s, you could even call an astrologer hotline to be consulted about what to do in a situation based on your sign and other aspects. Studies have since grown and astrology has faded in some cultures due to belief that it is more of an art form than a legitimate science. One example of a scientific argument is that since the zodiac was created, the earth has tilted, shifting the sun signs and adding a technical 13th sign, Ophiuchus. However, most astrologers will argue that even if substantial scientific proof is not brought to light, astrology still tends to be accurate and can be used as a tool in everyday life. There is a lot of value behind astrology. Studies show that humans who feel less in control of their lives are naturally drawn to astrology, and the positive aspects of horoscope readings can improve cognitive and creative skills as well as testing ability. Although it's not our only way of determining the personality of someone, astrology's history can show us the progression in the study of celestial bodies, showcasing differentiating variables in human behaviors. Next time you're wondering why someone is so similar to you, or vastly different, check their sign and see if a correlation exists, for the amount of information that can be found on compatibility between signs is almost endless. Use the information to create a better understanding of who you are and see what knowledge you receive.